Hey, this is Andrew from Swap and Pop with a preview 0.7.0. And as you notice, I'm not in full screen because I wanted to show you uh, some things that we've added into our developers tools. So when the game launches up, we usually get this uh, cool developer window here. Currently, it's not disabled until we actually have a stable build. But you'll notice that we have this cool tab called Swap and Pop. And uh, what we've done is we've made it really easy to debug the game. And so here I am on the on the menu screen. As you can see, we have our nice new logo in place. It's still in the works, but I thought I would slot it in there. And let's start up a game here. And so here the game is starting. You can't hear sound effects, but I sure can. And I'm going to just pause the game. So what I've done is I've actually frozen the game. And this is, the, this is not the same thing as pausing it. Uh, so what I've actually done is stop the game loop so that we can actually debug the game um, uh, step by step and and there's a few things we can do we can actually move the game one frame ahead or step it back uh, up to 120 frames because we we save up to 120 snapshots when the game is running which we could extend but it, it's good enough data but here i'll go back here and go to my swap and pop tab and now it's populated with a bunch of stuff and it shows me exactly um what is going on here so here i can see here it's play fields one visible so only the the fields that are visible here and we scroll all the way down, you can see that they match. So you have the uh, triangle, then the heart, uh, and etc. So um, this is a very powerful tool for debugging. And when I was working on garbage, I realized that if we were ever going to be able to stamp out all our um, um, inconsistencies, this tool is going to be very powerful for both developers and people who want to try to figure out what's like how the game works. So um, I'm just going to go hit Escape here. And you can see under our Inputs tab, we have these, these three uh, new inputs, which is for the simulation. So here I've stopped the simulation, which was um, I have assigned a tilde, which or sorry, um, well, whatever whatever's under tilde on the keyboard. And then we have step forward and step backwards, which I've mapped to my minus equals keys. So I can go um, back to the game here. And I'm just going to take it out of simulation mode. So now it's running again. And here I can swap something, right? And then I'll just stop it. And we'll go back here. And I can hit up and down, left and right here. I'm just going to go through here and see if I can find any changes in the snapshots here. Because something definitely changed recently. These get snapped pretty fast, so it's hard to say. Oh, there it is. OK, so see when I was when I swapped that, that, that? That's what was moving. So I made it so that it'll highlight things in purple if things have changed from the previous tick or frame, if you like. Uh, if you like. And you can see there's a little purple one and the purple one. This one's blank and all. That's why there's nothing here. You can see that they're swapping. So you get an idea. You can see that they start in the swap phase and then now they're swapping and then you'll see them count down. Four, three, two, one, zero. Great. Um, and so this is this is uh, quite the useful tool. So I'm just going to go back up here and play a bit here. I'm going to set this up for a swap and I'm just going to swap here. OK, great. And if you caught it, there was actually a popping animation. We didn't have that before. And you can also see that the garbage payload went. Now, we only did a three match, um, which obviously you would never have a garbage payload for. But for uh, debugging purposes, I have it permanently turned on. Uh, it's very easy to put it for the combos and chains. It was just that I, I'm really still working on that animation um, and, and connecting it with the garbage thumbnail. But um, now that, that that went through, we can actually step backwards. So here, I'll just go back here. And I'm just going to hit minus on the keyboard. And you can see it's moving backwards. And I can even hold it. And then you can see this is happening here. Now, this will run out, um, even though it shows me that I always have 120 in here. Um, that's the only thing is that I could, if I keep on going back, I'll hit an error here. But I can go forward as well. But this is great because it, you can really see yeah, what's going on here, right? So, and also, if you want to see the invisible rows, because there are rows above here that you can't see, you can turn those on. You can even turn off the visible ones, only see those. And we can look at the second player as well. I think I have to widen it here to see the second player. There we go. Uh, another thing that's really cool is that um, now when you stop the frame, there's a variable that's exposed called stage, which is this, this whole thing here. And so let's say I needed to debug something. So I'm going to go back up here to um, this frame here. And so let's say I wanted to look at this particular uh, panel here. Well, I know this is play field zero. Um, and it gives me the ID. It says 106. That's the ID of uh, that panel. So I could go here to stage playfield zero dot stack I, which is to get it via the um, its, its index. And I can say 106. And that will return me back this uh, panel. And I can say, I can go here, I'll just say panel. And I can look at it and look at its state. 
Um, I can look at its kind and a bunch of other things. And I can also trigger stuff. So this having this bound here is very useful for debugging. Um, and we're already getting a lot of value out of it. Um, so, I mean, that's that, but let's, let's show you some of the things that were going on with garbage because that is one of the biggest things we need to complete is garbage. So here I'm just going to do an actual combo. And so you saw garbage drop, which we've seen before. Um, okay. We'll drop a bit more garbage here. Okay. And so I'm going to go to my other controller here. And if I do this, you can see that they, they all clear and we even had the animation as well. Um, now it's a bit hard for me to do, but let's see if I can do it. Um, but if we can get a three times chain, we can actually drop larger garbage. So that's something that's new. Um, let's see if I can find a three times chain here. So let's see here. We see, um, and I'm not very good at Tetris attack. I'm better at making a game than playing it, but we could move this here and then have the two purples there. And that would then have, um, the the gold into the purple chain, and then we could set it up for the blue. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. And actually, I can hear music, I'm just gonna turn it down because I can't hear anything that I'm doing here. Great, okay, so we'll go back here. Hold on. Great, now it's muted. Um, and so I said I wanted to chain this gold here into the purple. Uh, so we'll flip that there, we'll bring this up here, right? And then we'll bring the blue over. And, oh, actually, no, I need the purple. I'm just trying to think here. I could also do cyan. Well, no, I guess I can't. Well, um, the point is, is that if you, if you're, if you're good at chaining and you do something larger, um, you'll get, you'll get larger, uh, garbage, um, panels and they actually will be, will be chaining garbage. So um, give that a go, but it definitely, definitely works. Uh, and so I think the next thing that we want to do is, I mean, there's more things to do with the um, garbage, but um, we need more of a sandbox in place so that it's easier for testing um, and setting up garbage. So I think maybe the next release will have a, a sandbox mode where you can actually set up your play field and even set up garbage if you want uh, to simulate how that will play out. So, um, but that's about it in this review. Um, I also think since the last few, you probably haven't seen uh, these fellows here. Um, so now we have our um, sprite art in, and this is Zephyr. We actually also have Kindle partially done, but I didn't have time to insert partial or um, insert Kindle into the game. But yeah, that's about it. Oh, actually, no, there's actually one more thing. Um, we also have the ability to insert um, uh, external assets. So this was uh, quite a large requested feature was Let's say you wanted this game to look like um, Tetris Attack. You don't want it to look like Swap and Pop. Well, um, the community wanted a way to override the graphics. So what we have done is we've made uh, a way for you to set an external folder and pop in your own sprites and images and it will override our internal ones. Now there aren't any instructions on it. And I, honestly, I haven't tested this myself, but I know it works. Um, so maybe in the next release, I will actually show off how to update um, external assets so you can get your own type of, if you want this to look like Tetris Attack or um, Paneled Upon or Pokemon Puzzle League, then you can uh, 